Hi, my name is Chris Siefkin again, and welcome to part two of this tutorial on making a Flash countdown timer using Flash and ActionScript 3. Um, in the first video, we created the um, dynamic text box. We created all of these little um, uh, labels down here. We put our artwork on both of the, um, the frames that we'll be using here. And the last part of this, or the meat and potatoes of this, is really the coding that will go behind this. You go to Actions um, and Option F9, or just F9 if you're on PC. To save time, I've already put it in here. I'm just going to go down through this and explain what's going on. So, let's start from the very beginning here. You're going to start with Stop. Um, the reason for this is because we want it to stop on this keyframe. Uh, we don't want it to continue on until we tell it to. From that point, we're going to create a variable called countdown timer. It's going to be a timer, and the um, interval of this timer is going to be 1,000 uh, milliseconds, or in other words, one second. We're going to add an event listener. That's going to be a timer event. It's going to get its information from the function update timer, which we will um, explain down here. And then after that, we're just going to start the countdown timer, which is right here. So the function update timer right here, that's going to be um, it's going to be an event. It's going to be a timer event, and it doesn't need to give us anything. We're not looking for any output, so the output's going to be void. Um, inside this, we're going to do a few, establish a few um, variables. First one is today. It's going to be a date and it's going to um, equal new date. Next one is year and that one's going to equal today.getFullYear. And then here, this is where the uh, daylight savings comes into play. Daylight savings begin date. We have to establish when that is, when it actually begins. And we're going to use our variable year to get our year. And it's going to happen, well, I'm in 2011, so it's going to happen in March. This counts up January being zero. So the third month, March, is actually two, and it's going to be the 13th. Same thing, we have to establish when that ends, and that's going to be the same thing. Year, um, it's going to be November. November is the 11th month, remember that January is zero, and it's going to be six. Now, like I said, I'm in... 2011 so if you're in a different year make sure that you adjust this to match that year this is the only thing that will be maintenance for you okay so what we're gonna do here is if today is greater than the beginning of our daylight saving time and today is less than or equal to the end then we're going to take today dot minutes we are going to subtract from their current value 240. That's four hours. And this will make sense in a second. And then the other half of that is the else statement. So if this is not true, then do this. We're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to subtract from today.minutes current value 300 minutes, which is five hours. The reason why I have four hours and five hours is because I'm on the East Coast and my time zone offset is negative four. So if you're on the East Coast, it's going to get negative four. So in other words, if this is correct, it's going to subtract negative four. So it's canceling itself out. And then if it's not, it'll take away five hours. So in other words, one hour back. So that's how that all works. Next, we need to establish some variables here. This portion here is how you set the timer. So this variable Sunday equals zero. Um, if you were Monday, be one, Tuesday, two, and so on. Variable for the uh, seconds is going to be an integer. That integer is going to equal 59 minus today.seconds. And then minutes, same thing. It's going to be an integer and 59 minus today.minutes. Hours, 
it's going to be an integer and for me for this purpose it was going to be 11 o'clock remember it starts at zero so 11 o'clock is actually 10 on here or we'll minus that from hours and then for days we're going to use an integer and it's going to be this variable here sunday minus today.day so in other words i'm counting down to sunday at 11 o'clock with no minutes you can adjust that to be anything you want it to be so if seconds is less than zero then we're going to take seconds we're going to add to its current value 60. so once it gets to zero we're going to start at 60 again but for minutes we're going to subtract one and we're going to do that for each one minutes once they get to zero we're going to add 60 again and from hours we're going to subtract one when hours gets to zero we're going to add 24 to their current value so it counts down to zero starts over again 24 and from days we're going to subtract one and then lastly days when it gets to zero we're going to add seven again okay next variable days is going to be a string it's going to be equal to a new string that we're going to define and we're defining it with this variable d it's up here okay and we're going to do that for each one hours minutes seconds next is this section here let's look at this if days dot length is less than two then days will equal zero plus days now what this is saying is um, as we count down it's easier if we use seconds if we count down with seconds we're going to start out with 59 sooner or later that's going to get into the single digits well if we get into the single digits let me bring up my timer here okay so what i'm talking about is here when it counts down to zero we're going to lose this digit right here and everything will shift over and then these won't line up anymore the uh, days hours minutes these little labels here won't add up anymore so to alleviate that problem this is where this comes in once it gets down to less than two integers we're going to add the text zero plus days whatever's remaining in days and we're going to do that for each one days hours minutes seconds create a new variable called time um, it's going to be a string and that string is going to be equal to days plus the text the colon here plus hours plus again the text of colon minutes and seconds so once again when you look at it here you're going to have days and a colon and hours and a colon and so on okay so that's that that string we're going to put that into the instance that we called time.text that's the dynamic text box that we created dot text it's going to say put the the text of this dynamic text box is going to be equal to this variable time and this variable is right here it's going to be the string next is how we know when to go to the next um, frame and it's just a quick little function here if seconds plus minutes plus hours and plus days is less than or equal to zero we're going to stop the countdown timer and then we're going to go to and play frame two now this last little bit of code down here this is how we get the button so remember we called let me go back here this instance here is called logo.btn remember this is where i told you if you call this something else then make sure in the code that you call it something else as well that's where this comes into play so logo.btn we're going to add an event listener it's going to be a mouse event and a click so when somebody clicks on it this is what's going to happen it's going to run this function this function here is going to be an event it's going to be a mouse event and return void and then what's going to happen inside of that is this right here it's going to navigate to a url and the url that we request is right here now they have to set the google um, so when i click on it i'll go to google. google last but not least is this little bit of code down here let me see if i can bring this up a little bit there we go this little piece of code here logo.btn.button mode equals true now what that's going to do is click on here 
it's going to change your pointer, as you see here, to the little hand that lets everybody know that yes, this is a button. And as you can see, if I click on it, I'll go to Google. Pretty cool. And that's it for the first frame. The second frame is so much easier. The reason for that is, let me X out here. Second frame is just this. You don't have to see anything. There's no text. It's just going to hang out on the screen until it's done, counting down in the background, and then once it's done, it's going to go back. So, for that, we don't have to worry about strings. We don't have to worry about anything else. What we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called timer. That timer is going to be a timer. We're going to define that timer as we see fit right here. Now, this one, the interval, or the space, is going to be 1,000 milliseconds, or one second. So the ticks of my clock are going to be in seconds. Makes sense. And this is how many times this will be repeated. In other words, how many seconds do we want to repeat this? Now, I had this set for 10 because of... Um, I'm going to test this in a second, and I don't want to wait around for an hour. So you can set this to anything. If I was going to do an hour, it'd be 3600. But for now, we're just going to do 10 seconds. Now this timer, uh, this variable, we're going to add an event listener. It's going to be a, a timer event. And what's going to happen is it's going to run this function. And then we'll hit start right here. So that function, countdown, is going to be an event, it's going to be a timer event, and it's going to have if then statement in here, if timer dot current count is less than or greater than or equal to 10, then we're going to stop and go back to the first frame. In other words, it's going to count up. This is technically a count up timer. It's going to count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 10. When it becomes greater than or 10, or greater than or equal to 10, 10 or 11, um, it's going to go to, it's going to stop this counter and go to frame one. Last but not least, we call both events, let me get that here. This one here, this instance here, we call logo.btn. We also called this one logo.btn. And that just makes it easier for me. As you can see here, it's the exact same thing that you find at the bottom down here without the function. If you copied the function over, you'd have problems because it would be defining a function twice with the same name. So we're just going to repeat logo.btn. It's going to be a mouse click. On click, it's going to run this function, which is actually explained in the first keyframe. And then we also have this button, mouse button or button mode is true, which, like I said before, changes your pointer into a hand. And that's it. That's all you have to do. So to test this, as you can see, it's Monday at 7 p.m. here. There's some things I need to change. Monday is 1. Uh, 7 is 1900. What do we got? Let's call it 0. And here we go. 18 seconds. Now, as you can see, like I said before, if I click on this, it'll take me to Google. Good to go. Um, and once this counts down here, in five, four, three, two, one, it will go to here. This is also a button going to Google. And then in 10 seconds, wait, wait for it, it'll go back and start counting down again. And that's that. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you're able to use this in many different ways. I think it's a, a versatile little tool that I've used many times. Um, and uh, if you have any questions or comments, if you see something in here that you think could be done better or in a different way, feel free to comment in the uh, comment portions of, of the video. So once again, I hope this helped out and uh, thanks a lot. Bye.